Everybody, it's Invicta. It's time for another Eden Run here, the Binding of Isaac Victor Repentance series. Happy Friday, Mosh Pit. I hope your weekends have gone off to a great start. We're still waiting for another video to cross 3,000 likes. A couple were very, very close. And if everything goes to plan, hopefully we will have our Glitch Chaos Run happening this Sunday, which I'm looking forward to. I know a lot of people are as well. So, and yeah, I just hope you had a great start to your Fridays here in the Mosh Pit. Here's your artwork slash cursed uh, animation uh, renderer of the day. Sent in here by Napping Artist. Tile Throw was made an Isaac-ish character. And they also said on the Reddit thread, been watching a lot of Invicta lately while teaching myself Blender 3D. So I decided to try to make my own character. And yeah, it looks very cursed, but also very on point. I think I see, let's see what we got. We got Inner Eye, we got Taurus, uh, maybe Hamalacria. I think the hairstyle is just a, I think it's just a, a hairstyle. So I also like the, the Devilmon that you did, a napping artist. So thank you very much. Really cool stuff to see. Also very, very cursed. <laughs> Okay, so today is going to be Juliet 089, Juliet Denver, Denver? Uh, sure, Denver for <laughs> Victor. Um, that's what I was, I was looking at Victor and saying, it, like going with a D, like Denver, like Delta, Victor. Like, I know, I know what my brain was doing there. So we're starting with Rainbow Baby. We have a good tears rate, good damage. Let's start with horrible movement speed, though. <coughs> and we get ourselves a little soul heart, which I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and leave in there for the time being. Um, our shot speed is also not phenomenal. Rainbow Baby is just going to fire random tiers. It's just kind of a, you know, whatever. It's just a, it's a follower. Like, you know, you get a little bit of extra attacks here and there. They sometimes charm and that's fine. But overall, it's, I, I, I doubt that Rainbow Baby is going to make it to the upper echelon of, hey, thank God we had this character. You know what I mean? Like this item. But it does add a little bit of extra damage to our attacks. So, you know. Could take ring ring cap, but yeah, I guess there's no reason not to. But eh. yeah, we need some movement speed. This is this is already looking a little bit. I don't want to say it, it's it, we're just in a it's a dangerous spot um, to be in with such little movement speeds. So, okay, Seagram's there. We end up starting off with Halo of Flies, which is a great defensive item. Gives us two fly protectors. Um. See what's inside the secret room. It's going to be a secret nothing burger of a room, but maybe we'll get a nickel and some stuff. Yeah, there we go. We also started with the, with the jar, which is going to allow us to pick up hearts and store them. A very weak cardio coin there. Not going to lie, game. So we'll go back into the curse room and uh, eventually grab that soul heart and peace on out of there. Um... Another heart there, which we might as well use. Now, what's interesting about the jar is that if we find enough red hearts, if we end up finding enough red hearts, we will be able to take some early, uh, some early sacrifice room plays, which would be great. Obviously, we're looking to try to get Diplopia Steam Sales. That would be very, very nice as well. Need some bombs. Or some money. That's fine, too. Get a bomb. Um... So we can guarantee get the nickel if we go into that other room with the lucky sack or just bomb our donation machine or take a big risk and bomb the keeper, which doesn't actually give us that much of an advantage here since technically speaking, we don't have a way to, I mean, there's no devil deal chance to get. So I'm going to take the surefire thing here. Just grab the, I'm just going to, I'm just going to take the, the nickel. We'll go pick up steam sale, diplopia and steam sale. So do this. And this is going to duplicate a bunch of hearts. Then uh, that, that. There we go. Fantastic. Apparently, you can only fit four. Apparently, you can only fit four red hearts into the jar. I thought it was way more than that. So. Never mind. I think the jar is not a great item, and we will easily be replacing it the second that I get a chance to. All right. We blighted Ovum. And thank God we got past that blighted Ovum. Um, get the Holy Mantle, which... If anything, I mean, it just adds, it just add, it gives us more firepower to get a devil deal on the next floor. Um, 
Now, obviously, we cannot, we can't take, we can't not take damage on the Soul Heart. As much as I would like to, our movement speed is just simply not good enough for it. So, we end up leaving with half of a Soul Heart, but we do have, we do have a Bone Heart, which is fine. Again, it's just as good as a as a Soul Heart, if not better. So, uh, no way in order, there's no way for us to get this Tinted Rock, unfortunately. But we leave out with a Steam Sail, and yeah. Maybe we'll be able to use these red hearts after all. We'll see. And going over to last week's question of the episode here. This is from the trailer episode, which, uh, you yeah, know, obviously it was a it was a a reference to the the GTA Six Grand Theft the Grand Theft Auto Six trailer which some people got and some people didn't get. Um, and it brought up an interesting aspect that I never even really thought about when I was telling Alex to make the thumbnail. Uh, and that was that most people, not most people, some people said that they just straight up, they almost skipped the video because they didn't realize that it was from my channel. And I didn't really want to make this Invicta logo super big because I felt like that was a little bit too self, self congratulatory. Um, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't, didn't want to send that, that vibe there. I just wanted to just, you know, just, I just had to do it. It looked, it looked cool. It was a good idea. Um, but some people some people said that they actually almost skipped the video entirely because they didn't know that it was from my channel. Uh, and, you know, it missed the mark. It didn't it didn't quite hit with, with everybody. Other people said that, I mean, they didn't even get the reference. So, and it's cool. Wow, we're just getting random soul hearts left and right here now. <coughs> you know, some thumbnails work, some don't. But that did bring up an interesting point. Um, cause I never even considered the fact that it's so unlike any of, of our other thumbnails that people would just, just overlook it. Um, but <coughs> I did ask in that question, in that episode, um, have you played the online co-op beta? And there was a lot of different, there's a lot of differing reasons why people were playing it and why people weren't playing it. So the number one most up upvoted comment came in from Joe Ken, who said, sadly, no, as I am a console peasant. And yeah, that's one of the main things that people said. And surprise, I'm, I, what I've learned from this question of the episode is that a lot of people play Isaac on console. I had no idea uh, that there were that many console players out there. So, and that's cool. Um, I just had no idea. I thought that, you know, with it, with it starting out as a PC game, I thought that everyone just played it on PC, or at least the majority. Of, and I think a still majority does, but I was really, really honestly surprised how many people were coming over from the console console world to uh, to watch the videos and stuff. So it's interesting. Um, second most upvoted comment came in from uh, Santino Giordano, uh, who said, no, but I'm really excited about it. Now I can experience clown physics with my friends. And yeah, that's a that's another great attitude to, to look at it with. Share the frustration of the Binding of Isaac with your friends. Uh, <laughs> now you can you can finally see what what's Invicta is uh, is hating on about for you know whenever whenever they happen for clown physics and last but not least our third most upvoted comment came in uh from dna the other secret there's a super secret room here by the way but we have any bombs we do have the torn card by the way that's that's not what dna is D dna said i'm just saying um they said that uh, no no but i would love to play it when it comes out with the full version don't want to play a beta because i want to have a bugless experience and yeah there's a couple reasons why i am not playing it um, ma mainly is, is I just don't like testing testing games. <clears throat> I don't like testing games that are like, <coughs> excuse me, that are like a year out from release. Um, and I, I I just I don't get excited about about games like that either. I would rather play games when they're out. Um. And, uh, you know, the Isaac Online co-op is not going to be out until 2020, like the end of this year. Or not this year, but next year. Um, and uh, I'm just like, eh. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to downplay the importance of game testing. Game testing is very important for the developers. So don't, don't get it twisted. It's, it's those of you who are testing it, good on you. Please give good feedback because that's just going to make the game a whole lot better for everyone else. But I will say that for me personally, I don't really, I don't want to do a beta test. And uh, 
Secondly, obviously, there's the there's the information going around that the game can corrupt your save files, even if you back them up. And that's been reported on by I've seen multiple people posted in the in the um, in the mosh pit uh, discord. I've seen people talking about it on Reddit. It's not something that I think is worth doing yet. Um, especially if, you, if it can corrupt, like, you know, everything. Like, you're just going to throw away your entire save file, like, all of them. Um, no, thank you. I think I'll I think I'll go ahead and wait on that. Uh, but, and that, you know, and I'm just not really eager to just play, to, to play a beta of, it's like, it's got co-op. I've heard from the people who have had, who have had a bug-free experience with it, which I'm happy that people are doing that. Um, you know, they said it's a lot of fun. Obviously, there's new... There, there are new marks that you can get. I don't know if they're going to be adding a new ending or not, um, or any new bosses. the The fact that the that Nicholas is is, or it's not Nicholas, but I mean it's it's really Ed. The fact that they're that they're pushing so hard to make Isaac a an online, like morphing it into into an online multiplayer game now, it's weird to me. I, it, it, in a it, it's. Not in a bad way, but just in an unexpected way. That was a great block by Halo of Flies, by the way. Black Candida. I am going to buy this half price Soul Heart, of course. Because, like, Isaac, for me, has always been a single player experience. That's it. You know, I mean, you can play via Steam Remote with friends right now, and it's, I would say, I would say relatively bug free, but it's not lag free. It does disconnect. Um, you know, the. The fact that uh, that they're that they're trying to turn it into into this almost like a it's I don't want to say MMO it's it's just it's just strange it's strange for me to, to see to see them continually update this game like that um, especially after they said there's gonna be no more updates but I already I already told you all many times that that was something that probably shouldn't be believed <laughs> they said they weren't gonna do any more updates and then now we're getting a massive game changing update uh and that is just that's on that's on point for isaac you get a range and luck upgrade here and uh and we could use i'm gonna save the perth for a devil deal Another aspect here is, of course, we don't want to we don't want to waste our red stew buff, which is very slowly going down. Uh, we gotta we gotta keep keep on pushing here. We we spent we spent seven cents of our of our hard earned money to get that. So we're gonna make it count. We also have this golden heart, which is gonna pop on the uh, curse room here, and that's fine because we want the money, obviously. Push your bombs, very good. Yeah, I'd still, I'd love to, to hear more extended thoughts on that. And by the way, if you didn't know what I'm talking about when I said there's there's new marks, um, there is a new, apparently there's a new shade of mark that you can get for post-it notes. And that rep represents the post-it notes that you've beaten on co-op. <coughs> so, um, and I've heard that, you know, all the, it's full unlocks. Like, you know, if you're having problems with, uh, if you're having problems with unlocks, you can simply just, and get a friend to help out and that's a great that, it's it's good for the game i don't want to make it seem like i'm, I'm saying that, that that them updating the game and having you know all kinds of new ways to play it is bad for the game it's not it's great for the game um it increases the longevity of it all i'm saying is that it was just surprising to hear that they were doing that i've heard that there's some there's some already lots of group meta lol group meta out there for uh, for playing co-op, seems like the the people the people from what I've seen or not what I've seen but what I've heard anyway is that you have at least one or two people play as Isaac, so you always have rerolls, and then the other two can kind of just be whatever that people need for um, for unlocks and that sort of thing. I'm not gonna it's it's marbles. I don't really care about marbles. Which is smart, like, you know, you can just all, all four play Isaac, or at least have three people play Isaac, and then one person play, like, you know, Tainted Jacob or something, and then there you go. And another great block by uh, Halo of Flies. Fortunately, our red buff 
a red stew buff is coming to a close. So we will not be enjoying the damage much longer. And uh, we are still suffering from this just atrociously bad movement speed. Horn card, I'm going to be honest. I'm just, I'm just being honest here. I have not seen us get a second, a second seeker room. Unless you're spawning these in a weird, weird, weird spot every single time, you're not spawning them in like what I would say is the, the atypical spots. It could be here, but if it's here, I'm going to be real mad. Oh my God. Yeah. See, this is what I'm talking about. This, you, you spawned them in a place that sh it should normally not be spawned in. Also, I'm looking for our item room, and it just doesn't exist on this floor, apparently. Because if we go north here, that's definitely the boss. That's where the secret was supposed to be, so... Yes, I'm telling the game where it should be spawning things. We'll take lead pencil. Fantastic tier effect. Every 15 shots that we fire is going to give us a monstrous lung shotgun approach. Well, it's like a shotgun volley almost, and it just adds more damage. So theoretically, if you really, really, really wanted to min max, you could, you could wait until you count 14 shots or going into the next room and then on the and then you know the the next shot that you fire going into the next room is going to be that shot right there you just saw is it worth doing that I think it's up to you I don't think it's worth the time but you know if you want to lead off a boss fight with it you can there we go it dealt slightly more damage it yellow champion chub who is actually kind of dangerous I mean, we're not in any danger right now, obviously, but, like, if you're on low life, like, she can be... can be a little ornery. And we failed an 80% chance for the deal with the devil. All right. Eighty percent. How does he do it? Really, really, really loves the movement speed. Like, I'm happy that we got a tears up. Don't get me wrong. Squeezy is an absolute, absolute baller of an item. Give you a tears upgrade and two soul hearts. I mean, what more could you ask for? Movement speed upgrade is what I'm asking for. As that we, if we had anything higher than 0.86 movement speed, we would not have been hit right there. So I'd love to get something like a Baden or the Pit. Again, we're desperate for movement speed. It's literally anything right now. Would have absolutely ripped the Perthro rune if we had gotten the steam sail or ahead of the keeper, I should say, because we already have steam sail. Our movement speed is so bad right now, we're getting caught on corners. <coughs> Just kind of just chilling, looking for our item room and shop. Um, end up finding the boss room, which let's just go do the boss right now, I guess. Since, since we're here, let's just go fight. Because maybe we'll get something that makes the backtracking a little bit easier. I think the other sister Vis is broken. Am you okay? I know you haven't been permanently feared this entire time. Okay, well. <laughs> okay. All right. Get a movement speed upgrade. Thank goodness. And it's a Krampus fight for our 100% deal with the devil. That's just, just super duper awesome. It's really great. It's really, 
super great. Just, just fantastic. Super duper awesome. So great. Really great. <laughs> All right. I have the head of Krampus now. All right, so we have the glowing hourglass now. All right, so we have the glowing hourglass now. Now we get to go back and find our item room, shall we? Take pills. Shot speed down, no thanks. It's already garbage. Could take pills, but I'm not going to. It might be a shot speed down. Continue our adventure here. Oh yeah, we were already over here. We look for our item room. <laughs> but hey, at least we got our we got our movement speed, so that's something. Cramp is fight. We finally get our second uh, secret room here. I'm getting real mad if there's an item in here. All right. Um, we can use our final. I was about to apologize to the to uh, the jar, but now we actually may end up using the jar. Maybe. What we can do is we can also just play the sack room down to basically completion. And then undo it with, uh, with the glowing hourglass. I mean, I guess we can take giant cell, especially if we're going to be tapping on the sack room. But it's going to—it's just a, just not a, not a great, not a great item for us to get in the item room. Okay, I'm going to leave that soul heart there because obviously I want to. Go in the cursed room. Let's go in the cursed room first. Boss rush is not going to happen. We we had a chance for it, but that was back. You have to remember that was kind of. I was a little bit uh, bolstered by the fact that we had uh, that we had um, uh, red stew. We get the pact, which of course is going to help us out greatly, and I think we just go ham here. Really don't like the way that giant cell looks. Isaac. Be redemption. Uh, troll bombs. Now the only the only crappy thing here is that we are going to have to fight Gabriel, or I mean Uriel, um, because obviously if we don't get what we want, we're going to have to undo everything. We can't leave this room. If we if we leave the room and then undo it all. Um, it's only going to take us just back to this room after we after the fact. So absolutely maul Uriel, and we get soul hearts. Is that worth losing the bone heart? I mean, I guess it's a net positive either way. Like we we end up leaving here with more hearts than we that we had. Now, I'm not going to lie, if we had the red stew buff still, I would highly consider just going straight to lamb. Um, but, as you see, we have our little army of little army of giant cells. Giant cell babies. Yeah, so we, we, we are going to end up keeping um, Glowing Hourglass. I think it's just going to be super helpful for a run like this. Undo that so we get our bombs back at least. It only saves one bomb, but eh, you never know how you never know where that bomb is going to be important. Trying real hard to to push through my limit of tolerance for for the hair, man. I still haven't I've have not cut my hair, 
and uh, oof. it is. I, I don't. I don't know how. I don't know how people with long hair do it. I really don't. I just. I can't. Like I know I'm still in the ugly duckling stage, which is like me 24/7. But you know, I. I really hate how my hair is going in my eyes. Um, like constantly. And I do actually have like hair ties now. Like not ties, they're like they're more like bands, like headbands. And they definitely help, but I'm so I'm so not used to wearing stuff on my head that like I get a headache sometimes. And it's not even like it's like overly tight or anything. It's just like I'm not used to wearing anything on my head. Except a baseball cap 99% of the time I go outside. So I, I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be able to tolerate it. I'm I'm I may be pulling the trigger and and hitting the eject button on the whole on the whole long hair thing. I feel like I just look better. Yeah. I feel like I just look better with short hair. I think that's just the type of head that I have. And I do look I, I do look good in a in a shaved head. I, I will say that. There, there's some there's some people who you know they who who just don't they they can't pull off the look you know but I will I will admit that my hair I will admit that my hair does look pretty good just straight up buzz cut um and that's what like I'm like so close to doing right now I will before, if I do decide, if I do decide to hit the eject button and I do decide to cut it, I will take a picture of it just so everyone has seen it. But you have to be on this Invicta Discord to see it, though. So if you want to join this Invicta Discord, all you got to do is just hit that join button down there. Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3 memberships here on YouTube. Um, I think it's like I think the first one is like $4.99 a month, and then it goes all the way up to $24.99 a month. It's basically in line with Twitch subs, essentially. Uh, man, but any level gets you access to the Discord. I thought about maybe adding like a custom role um, that would allow people to see what we have. A, we have a sword up there. I know we have a red heart, but I just don't feel like going back all the way over there. <clears throat> I was thinking about adding a, a custom Discord role or icon or something for people who have higher level tiers on YouTube and Twitch and stuff. I don't know if that's something that people really care about. Our Discord, our Discord is great. It's it's very active. We have a lot of channels that we talk about Pokemon cards and we talk about Isaac and talk about games, uh, music. You know, we have lobbies for like uh, Lethal Company and you know our Project Zomboid. Other games as well. And the Keeper Sack as well as Member Card here at the 11th hour. Take School Bag. I'm going to take uh, Iconium, even though I'm not going to hold on to it. Obviously, it's just purely out of the fact that I just want to get more stats via uh, Keeper Sack. Take school bag, and I am going to take meconium here, even though I'm not going to keep it, because I'm just doing it purely out of wanting to buy it for stats with Keeper Sack. I'm not going to take that pill, because it might be a tears down pill. And we'll just donate everything back into the donation machine, I think. We'll bomb the Keeper here. Seeing the weird tier height thing come into play here with Hamalacria. I do love how we, again, it's the game imitating the meme of the day. We talk about Hamalacria. Even though I'm not sure if that was Hamalacria in that render, kind of looked like it to me anyway. And of course, we get Hamalacria. Okay, Blue Mom. Try to stun her. You try to stun her as early, slow her as fast as possible as soon as the foot comes down. That way you get maximum uptime thanks to uh, the hourglass. 
Not expecting a double deal here. You actually get a devil deal. Um, yeah, it's so hard too. So, all right. Napping artist also made a render of the of a devil mon. Those of you who play Summoner's War, that I really enjoyed. Like a fuzzy, a fuzzy devil mon. I haven't played Summoner's War in quite a while. Um, I've been too busy. Honestly, like again, I know I've talked about it like a while now, but for like the la ever since we did the sponsorship, but like I've been unironically playing Raid Shadow Legends. Um, and it's been nice being able to just play something different. Um, and you know, it, it has, it does scratch that gacha game itch. Um, I haven't spent any money on it and I wasn't, I wasn't paid to, to buy anything in the, uh, the sponsorship deal. I don't remember if I've already, I think I may have already talked about it. <clears throat> I know I talked about it on stream, but I don't know if I talked about it on YouTube, but in case if I didn't forget Vold and Victo, just going to repeat himself real quick. Um, Raid was, they were so happy with the job that we did, um, on our, on our sponsor stream that they want to do another one this month, which is to my knowledge and what I've been told unprecedented. Um, they want me to, they're going to, I guess, team me up with a, with a content creator from, from the Raid Shadow Legends community. And we're going to do like a co-stream or something for a sponsored segment. And that's really, really cool. Um, so, and again, I have no one to thank, but you all for, for making it such a, a great stream. And, uh, again, the sponsors, the sponsors were so happy about that, that they, they wanted to run it back. So we're going to be doing that again at some point in December, um, which I'm looking forward to. So, and no, that I was playing, I was continually playing raid before I even found out that they like had watched the stream. So that was really cool, but it does kind of scratch that gacha game itch. <clears throat> similar to the vein of like you know of, of summer's war um and, and games like that like the hero collectors the summer's war like epic seven raid um you know seven deadly sins uh grand cross those games are it's they appeal to me because a like obviously like the, i love i like to gamble um i like getting like you know nat fives and that sort of thing and secondly what's intriguing about them is the it's the team building aspect of it and because like you all know that i'm a sports fan and i like i like watching sports i played sports for a very long time and uh, <clears throat> something akin to those hero collector gacha games that are mo that are on you know the mobile platforms um is that you know you start off with your you start out with like a star like you you build you build your team around having a star player right and then you give you give them weapons and firepower. So like your starting your starting hero or whatever is like your quarterback, right? And then you want to give them you want to give them like a good receiver. You want to give them a good blocker. You want to give them a good you know a good a good healer that sort of thing. So and that that kind of stuff. Once you start getting the team aspect down and they start working like a well oiled machine, like you get those right those right superstars. Like maybe you summon like a really really strong character that is like. A, 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 a superstar like support you know then your team really starts shining and then you speed tune and all that kind of good stuff so i, I don't know it, it's it's way more it's way more nuanced and you can even go even uh, like deeper than that at, at that level i've seen you know there's people who play that that hardcore um that's really where where those kind of games really appeal to me and i know i know they're not everyone's jam and i i respect that you know, and there's there's games that just aren't my jam. You know, I don't I don't like platformers. I don't uh, I don't like like story driven games. I don't like uh, you know visual novels that sort of thing. I, I really don't like platformers. I can't tell you how many times my friends have tried to get me to play Spelunky, and I tried Spelunky one time, and I was like, man, I do this is not my game. I have, I mean, I do own Spelunky 1. I didn't buy 2. Um, and I was just like, 
I was just like, I can't, I just can't do it. it it's not, it's just not my cup of tea. Like I played, I played Meat Boy, Super Meat Boy, and oh, Super Meat Boy was slightly more appealing, slightly, than Spelunky, but even then, like I was still like, eh, just, I'm just not a fan, man. the I think lowest amount of devil deals that we've ever seen on a run <laughs> Not in the curse room because we can just undo it in case there's anything in here that we don't want uh, wild card wild card and soul of Isaac We can't take both at once. Is it really, is it worth two soul hearts? Uh, I'm gonna say no. Let's see what we get out of the devil deal first. Then maybe if we can get in there, we can come back to it. No, I'm not, I'm not going to. Nothing in that room is worth, worth one soul heart. kind of where the disadvantages of Hamalacria start to shine in the just horrible tears rate. I mean, it is nice for the splash damage and everything, but you're also seeing a lot of the visual doo-doo on the screen that is making, makes dodging somewhat difficult sometimes. It's just d difficult to see. The world. I cannot believe that he landed that shot. I want to undo it, but I'm not going to because I see that there is a sacrifice room, so... I think we go, we just go to the sack room now. This the world car will show us where the extra secret rooms are. I, these, these mob, people ask me some of my most hated mobs. Those mobs right there are one of my most hated. So we're going real deep here on this late game sack room play, but now here, here's the, this is the real turd in the punch bowl. If we do end up getting teleported into the angel deal, um, or devil deal, what's bad is that we can't undo the damage that we've already done to ourselves via the sack room. And we're going to be forced to just kind of go with it. So we almost are hoping that we don't get teleported here and we just simply get an angel deal item. Colonel heart's good. And although this did work, ends don't justify the means, of course. This did work out for us, but seeing many cells just go ham there. Wow, we got the we got the uh, soul heart payout. I think every single time that we played. Which might be a first. There's a double tinted rock there, by the way. So I think now we can go. We can go pick up that, uh, pick up the soul of Isaac, and then I guess just hold on to it for the chest. So we have rerolls. The wild card would repeat, it would give us an extra use on the glowing hourglass, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, we still have one charge left anyway, so we have plenty of HP. careful with the jostling there and look at that we're gonna get a full heal anyway grab this luck upgrade real quick
Super secret room is most likely to the left of here. It looks like the only spot that it usually spawns in that we've seen. If it's not there, then it has to be north of this room up here. Otherwise, I don't know what the game's doing. Yeah, it's right here. And that's one of those things where you just... I, I know it, it sounds... It sounds a little... Um, pretentious to say. It sounds a little pretentious to say, but that's just one of those things that, like, after you after you play the after you play the game for so long, you just know where things are going to spawn, or at least have a very good idea of where it's going to spawn. And yeah, that was a very that was fun. That was a very funny game. Very funny how you spawned that eye laser right underneath us, right after we got done using the glowing hourglass. We've already been in there, so we don't need to go in there. What are with these rooms we're getting? Also, this is a this is a good example of many eyes causing more problems than solving, which the 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 problem is that again it goes down to clown physics. Um you see them you see them firing and, and kind of jostling the enemies around because they're just they're firing at whatever, right? Like I can't control where they fire, what direction they fire from, that sort of thing. And if they're chasing after a fast moving enemy that happens to be running at Isaac, but they're behind the enemy, <clears throat> what they do is they actually propel the enemy forward towards Isaac. And uh, that's a problem. Um, so, you know, there, there are times when I scoff at items like many eyes, and that is for this particular reason, the reason why. And then kind of goes for followers too, like, you know, like Rainbow Baby or anything that has a projectile. You have to be real careful about their outgoing damage because you can't control it. I mean, they're gonna fire when you fire when you fire sometimes, but other ones, you know, fire on their own, like Boil Baby, for example. I'm going straight to Isaac here, and I'm happy about that. Those large explosions that you're seeing, by the way, don't forget that we still have lead pencil. Um, that's where those larger Hamilacria shots are coming from. When you see it, like it, that one right there, like it almost looks like we have a cricket's body. They're still proccing, it's just making a whole butt ton more of uh, Hamel of shots. And we, if we land with one of those, especially if we end up having like piercing shots, piercing shots would send this over the edge in terms of damage. There we go. And one more floor to pay dirt here. We'll see if the uh, if the soul of Isaac is going to pay off for us. The D, I mean, we get the D-sizzle, so. Uh... <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Um... Wow. I feel like. We can't not take dead eye, but man, why did it have to be? Why did it have to be both D sixes, man? Okay, I'm going to take this D six. I'm going to take dead eye. And then I just want to see what they turn into here. Oh, they, okay. So that eats, that eats the, uh, that actually eats the soul of Isaac. Got it. So I think what we're going to do we're going to do that and let's see if that gives us different items too. It did. Interesting. Okay. 
So we definitely we want Dead Eye. Sharp Straw. I mean, Sharp Straw is real good. We don't really need the Glowing Hourglass anymore. Then we can take Chocolate Milk. Uh, and then roll these. Then take. I think tech one is obvious, obviously. Don't really need Seraphim. Yeah. Yeah. Chocolate Mill, Camel Acria, Dead Eye, tech one is, um, <clears throat> it's okay. Pretty strong. We, we deal damage. You know, we, we, we occasionally just black out the entire screen, you know. <clears throat> Obviously, this would have been a lot better had we gotten this, like, I don't know, 4-2 or whatever. <clears throat> we go fight Mega Stanley, too. I feel like we haven't fought him in a while. But those when the lead pencil shot hits. Oh yeah, man, let's go. Let's go say hi to Mega Stan. Might as well. Unexpected Mega Stanley uh, appearance. We also get to re-roll the original starting room one more time. Ah, soul buddy, check him out now. What is this gonna do? Is this gonna is this gonna fire tech one every every single time it hits the ground? Uh, I can't tell. It appears so. Oh lord. <laughs> If only the entire run was as crazy as the last two minutes of this run. But hey, we end up getting a, a pretty wild and wacky combo at the very end here. So I'll take it. I'll definitely take it. It's a good way to go into the weekend. Again, everyone, uh, if you're interested in joining the Mosh for Discord, simply just click the join button. and uh, Or you can do it if you want to go save a little bit of money and get a cheaper route. You can go, uh, you can go to Patreon if you don't like giving money to Google, or you can do it via Twitch. Either way, all three have been normalized. And by the way, I, sh I should mention we've normalized the, the Discord access to go across. It's $4.99 across all three of the platforms. Um, yeah, we'll go, we'll, we'll go a little bit of extra innings here. So originally, originally it was... I had, I, it was all access to the Patreon, allow people to gain Discord. And now uh, we recently changed it to where it's only, where it's it's normalized across the board. So it's $4.99 or five bucks a month, basically, um, either on YouTube, Patreon, or Twitch, and that gets you access. So you can, you have the pick of the litter. Now, those of you with Twitch accounts, I should mention, we have lots of very generous people in the mosh pit. And they tend to they tend to gift a lot of subs. So if you do happen to gain, if you do happen to have a Twitch account first and foremost, um, go check my Twitch channel, Twitch.tv/Invicta, because you may already be subscribed. It's very possible that you have been gifted a sub and didn't even realize it. And that too will also grant you access. At least we get to kind of see what the rest of this run would have looked like had we gotten this combo early on. Yeah. I mean, the tears, tears rate doesn't matter anymore because we've got chocolate milk, obviously. Now you talk about visual doo doo. Oh, brother. I mean, our. Our tech one shots will, will black out the sun. That's what we're talking. I cannot believe that that shot follows that far.
I'll go holy water. The real question is, will we be doing a full clear to find Delirium? No, oh, the answer is no. So remember, we do have Sharp Straw as well, so Sharp Straw absolutely obliterates Delirium. Dealing that coveted percentage damage. Very good way to chunk down all the annoying bosses like Delirium. While being able to stay far, far, far away from him because obviously he's got a limited range. Because it's an AoE, so. Anyway, what a what an awesome way to kick off the weekend, everyone. Thank you for watching. I hope you had a fantastic time enjoying this episode. If you did, make sure you click the like button. Leave a comment down below. Remember, if we get to 3,000 likes on this video, we will get our Glitch Chaos run coming up on Sunday. Let's make it happen. And thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing, everyone. And as always, I will see you all next time. Until then, so long, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. I'd like to thank the patrons of mine like Riley Schaefer, Fred, and Katoru. If you'd like to have your name read at the end of the last episode, check out my Patreon campaign, which you can find at patreon.com. Last Invicta.